Thousands of feet below the ocean surface, there are millions of creatures that you don't know about. Thanks to scientists and their research, we've been able to discover some of them. Octopus. It's an octopus. octopus. Is it a Dumbo Look octopus? At you. It looks like a Dumbo. Or no. is it a so pretty. Shiny. From the octopus named after Disney's famous elephant Dumbo to the fish whose fangs are more prominent than its mouth. Here are 20 mysterious things found in the Mariana Trench. Black Sea Devil The Black Sea Devil is found in tropical to temperate waters of the Atlantic, Indian, Pacific Oceans and, of course, the Mariana Trench. The species has a thing for dark places, so they're not commonly spotted and rarely ever captured on camera. The Black Sea Devil is from the anglerfish family and was named so because of its menacing appearance and pitch black skin. No name would have been more appropriate. The dark brown velvety black skin allows them to camouflage in the depths of the cold, dark sea over 3,000 feet below. The body of a Black Sea Devil is scaleless. Its head is pretty large and its teeth, hmm, its teeth are balefully large, sharp, and fang-like. However, only females have such teeth. The females are also short-bodied globular forms with sagging bellies that have the ability to swell greatly. This means that they can swallow up prey that's larger than themselves. When this happens, that is, when they eat prey considerably bigger than them, their movement becomes very slow. That's good for them if you ask us. How would you consume something twice your size and not expect to be weighed down? We can see why they're called devils now. Black Sea Devils have incredibly soft skin, which can easily wear away when handled or collected. They also have rounded fins with slightly engraved membranes. We can't help but wonder if somewhere in the ocean, maybe on the other side of the water, there's a fish called White Sea Angel. That would be cool. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. What scientists just discovered in the Mariana Trench terrifies the whole world. He's staring at you. This skeleton's staring at you, and it seems like a sailor of a capsized ship with his hands on the wheel and his cap on his head. But the big question is, how is there a cap on his head? If his skin is decayed, why didn't the cap? A cap should have been shredded to nothing, don't you think? This is such a puzzle, and we wonder what those who found him thought when they did. They must have been shocked to find a skeleton staring with its neck in that position. Let's throw it to you. What do you think? Do you think the picture is real or do you think it's fake? Share your opinions with us in the comments with the hashtag missing topic. We'll be expecting. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Mariana Snailfish Yeah, it looks like a chicken lap with eyes. What you don't know is this ghostly, pink, smooth-skinned creature found at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean's Mariana Trench is the deepest fish ever brought up from the deep sea. This is the deepest fish that's been collected from the ocean floor, were the words of Mackenzie Geringer, the lead author of a paper on discovering the Mariana snailfish species. The species' scientific name is named after a navigator on the 19th century expedition that discovered the trench, Herbert Swire. Geringer was a PhD student at the University of Hawaii. Conducting research as a member of an international team when 36 of these specimens were collected in 2014. Want to know how deep they were in the sea? 22,600 and 26,135 feet. Geringer and her team used free falling traps with mackerels as bait to catch the fish. Since then, Researchers have sighted Mariana snailfish swimming at 26,716 feet in video footage. This is the deepest sighting for now. The Mariana snailfish is the king predator in the depths of the Mariana Trench. This is the point where you say, small but mighty. They're free of predators and can roam or swim around freely. They live off tiny crustaceans, shrimp, and the numerous invertebrate prey that's down there, which they suck into their mouths. This snailfish might not be very robust, but it is never hungry and lives very happily in the deep sea. The Bone-Eating Worms Osidax, also known as bone worms or zombie worms, are one to three inches long that feed on bones. The name zombie worms were inspired by their habit of boring into the body remains of dead whale. They were first discovered in 2002 by a group of researchers studying the depths of the Monterey Bay in California. 
the worms had been feeding on the carcass of a gray whale. Once scientists knew that zombie worms existed, they went on a quest to find more of them. They drugged the carcasses of whales and other dead animals and sank them to the bottom of the ocean. They then waited for months and years before dragging them out. Crazy, right? Since their first discovery, over 15 species of the worm have been discovered. Here's something even crazier. Zombie worms don't have mouths or teeth or even stomachs. They feed by secreting an acid that liquefies the bones to reveal fats they digest with symbiotic bacteria. It's a very strange process, we know. The most absurd fact about zombie worms is that females only do the drilling. The microscopic males are smaller and live in harems inside of the female's mucus tube, meaning they live inside their bodies. This makes mating really easy for them since the eggs and sperm are right next to each other. Once, 111 males were found inside one female zombie worm. That's a lot for one woman. USS Johnston When you go deep down into the sea, you're sure to find more than living creatures. In 2019, the remains of the USS Johnston, a 115-meter-long U.S. Navy destroyer that sank in 1944, were discovered for the first time. The Japanese Navy sank the warship during the Battle of Samar on October 25, 1944. 186 men died out of the 327 crew members of the ship, including the captain, Ernest Evans, who was given a posthumous Medal of Honor. Victor Vescovo, the founder of Caladan Oceanic, a private company focusing on ocean expeditions, led the expedition to survey and film the destroyer ship. Vescovo's a former U.S. Navy commander, but that's probably the least of his accomplishments when you compare it to the world record for being the first person on the planet to have been to the top of the world's continents and the bottom of all its oceans. Pretty incredible, right? According to him, ship number 557 was still visible on both sides. There were also two gun turrets right where they were supposed to be. In his reports, Vescovo shared that the turrets were pointing in the right direction, the direction he believed they were in, as they continued to fire at the enemies before the ship went down. The expedition team didn't find any human remains or pieces of clothing. That's understandable because there sure are thousands of human-eating creatures down there, some of which are on today's list. And we're talking about an accident that happened 78 years ago. It'd be shocking if they actually found human remains from that accident down there. The discovery of the USS Johnston is a reminder of the sacrifice and bravery of those who died that day in the Gulf. Ping Pong Tree Sponge It looks like a tree covered in ping pong balls, but that's just a guise. What it is is a flesh-eating sponge, a sponge-eating flesh. That sounds so bizarre. Aren't you curious to know more about this creature? Because we're curious to tell. To find the ping pong tree sponge, you must go 10,000 feet into the ocean. It's a carnivorous deep-sea sponge discovered for the first time 10,800 to 11,500 feet in the Northeast Pacific Ocean off the coast of Northern California. The sea creature is called the lyre or harp sponge because of its basic harp-shaped structure known as the vein. Each of its veins consists of a horizontal branch supporting various vertical branches. The harp sponge may look all new, cute and harmless, but it's a sea predator. If you happen to be 10,000 feet in the Pacific Ocean, avoid it. It anchors itself to the soft and muddy floor of the sea with its root-like structure called a rhizoid. It captures prey that drifts past in deep sea currents by snaring it with its veins, covered in velcro-like hooks and spines. Since it is a carnivore, it feeds on copepods and other crustaceans. Once the hooks entrap the prey, the sponge secretes a digestive membrane that engulfs the captivated target, breaking it down to the ping-pong tree sponge can suck it up through its pores. In 2013, it was on the list of the top 10 new species discovered in 2012. It made it to the list of 140 nominated species. Give this sponge its flowers. It's not every day you find a sponge that can do more than cleaning. Dumbo Octopus Dumbo octopuses live 13,100 feet deep down into the ocean. They're the deepest living of all octopuses. For the species to be able to survive in such depths, it means they have the ability to survive in cold water and in the absence of sunlight. Ironically, they're called the cutest octopus on the planet. It's ironic because they live in less favorable conditions and aren't that pretty. So, who named them the prettiest octopus? At first sight, you'll be unable to tell what exactly it is. 
It moves by slowly flapping its ear-like fins. The octopus often rests on the seafloor with its arms and webs spread out. It then uses its arms to crawl across the seafloor slowly. They're called Dumbo octopuses, not because they're dumb. Instead, it's because of the two large fins that protrude like ears. In fact, they're named after Disney's Dumbo, the elephant famous for its big ears. The Dumbo octopus rarely encounters predators in the deep sea. So unlike other octopuses, it has no use of an ink sac and therefore doesn't have it. The known preys of the Dumbo octopus include copepods, amphipods, and isopods. They trap the prey by enclosing it in the arm webbing or between the webbing and the seafloor, then use finger-like projections along the arms to move the food to its mouth. An octopus must eat. The Deep Sea Hatchet Fish This sea creature was born ready. With its large eyes pointing upwards and pelvic bones tilted downwards, the hatchet fish is prepared for whatever food or danger that comes its way. Remember telling your friend something that surprised them? Now imagine that look or expression being stuck on their face forever. That's kind of like the story of the deep sea hatchet fish. Its gaping, frowning mouth and wide eyes freeze the face of the hatchet fish in a permanent surprise, as though in preparation for a downfall in the mouth of a predator. So whether they're happy or sad, it's the same expression. Another remarkable fact about them is that they're camouflaged. Thanks to bioluminescence, they have light-producing organs called photophores and rows on their bellies. They can regulate the color and intensity of light from the organs to the light filtering from down. This process is called counterillumination. In plain words, it makes the hatchet fish almost invisible from predators below. They're very, very mysterious creatures. Not much is known about their life cycle or lifespan. Researchers believe they live for a year at maximum. They also know that the juvenile hatchet fish looks very different from the adult. Researchers also believe that the hatchet fish migrate to shallower waters to feed on ostracides, crustaceans, copepods, and plankton at night. During the day, they return to their home 4,500 feet in the blackness of the deep ocean. The deep sea hatchet fish is not the prettiest fish on the planet but it is a busy fish. It doesn't have time to care about its appearance. The hatchet fish moves around like a ghost, looking for prey. They even travel outside their comfort zone to shallow waters just for food. Comb jellies. Comb jellies look very much like fruit jellies, only that the former is larger, living, breathing, and lives thousands of feet in the deep sea. Comb jellies are the largest animals to swim with the help of cilia. This is what's referred to as combs, tiny hairs which make up glowing color bands. The body of a comb jelly consists of a mass of jelly, with cells thick on the outside and another lining the internal cavity. The outer surface bears eight comb rows known as swimming plates. The combs run across each row and consist of thousands of unusually long hair, up to two millimeters. Comb jellies are predators. They take prey ranging from microscopic larvae and rotifers to the adults of small crustaceans. When it swallows prey, the jelly liquefies the prey in the pharynx through enzymes and the muscular contractions of the pharynx. The slurry outcome drifts through the canal system by the beating of the cilia and is digested by the nutritive cells. We could go on and on. They're more complex than sponges and are as complex as jellyfish. Unlike sponges, comb jellies have cells bound by intercell connections in carpet-like basement membranes. They have muscles, nervous systems, and sensory organs. Comb jellies can easily be distinguished from other animals. This is because they have chyloblasts, which are sticky and adhere to prey. The comb jelly is only glorious in the water. Once it's taken out of the water, it breaks apart. This is a top-tier secret. It doesn't mean you should harm it or anything. Vampire squid. The vampire squid is small. It can reach a maximum total length of one foot, and that's it. The animal does not feed on blood. Its dark color and cloak-like webbing inspired the name. It's not Twilight or Edward, but when the vampire squid is disturbed, it inverts its cape to display large spines that line the underside of its arm. In this picture, the squid looks intimidating, but it's quite harmless. It feeds on detritus and other food particles that it captures using sticky cells on its long tentacles. So it feeds on plant and animal matter that sinks from the surface ocean. Never have you heard that other creatures attack and defeat a vampire. Vampires, as we know, are indestructible, except they go under the sun, right? 
This vampire squid is already far away from the sun, but there are large fish and diving predators that eat it. That's quite sad. Vampire squids don't release black ink to escape predation like shallow water squids and octopuses do. However, it releases a colorless substance that contains many particles of light-producing material. These twinkling lights shine like diamonds in the sky and confuse potential predators. That's how the vampire squid scares its enemies. Nothing too violent. They also produce light at the tips of each of their arms. Did someone say disco ball? The light may be used as a form of communication. And because the species are rare, encounters between male and female vampire squids to reproduce don't happen very often. So when they have the chance, they make the most of it. They blink those lights if they have to and woo themselves. Barrel eye fish. The barrel eye is also known as the spook fish. Can't tell if it's because of its spooky look or because of something else. Its eyes are two bright green upward pointing orbs that are visible through its forehead. The eyes are barrel shaped and are directed upwards to detect the silhouette of prey. The eyes can also rotate forward if need be. Pretty cool, huh? Imagine having eyes on the top of your head. You'll have so much more to say about the sky and you'll get to understand ceilings better. Okay, we admit, it'd be weird having eyes on top of your head. Except you're like the barrel eye and you can also look forward. Back to the fish, its mouth is toothless and small and is in a pointed pout. The body of the spook fish is dark brown and covered in large, silvery, imbricate scales. The fins are spineless and relatively small. However, the pectoral fins are elongated and wing-like. They're used for station keeping in the water column. The primary and favorite food of the barrel eye is zooplankton. Based on what scientists found in the fish's stomach, they believe it also eats crustaceans trapped in the tentacles of siphonophores. Barrel eyes are solitary creatures that can be found 2,000 to 2,600 feet deep in the ocean's twilight to midnight zones. There's little known about barrel eye reproduction, but researchers figured out that they release eggs and sperm in mass directly into the water. The Supergiant Amphipod It's not just a giant, it's a supergiant. The supergiant amphipod is the largest species of amphipod ever discovered. In comparison to other amphipods, the Alicea gigantea grows at a faster rate. Because of its size, it's called the supergiant. The first specimens were collected from the Majera abyssal plain at the end of the 19th century. Since then, specimens have been found in abyssal plains in the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Chromatic Trench in the Southwest Pacific. Amphipods are one of the most important groups of crustaceans in the oceans. They're very distinctive in that they contain no carapace but their bodies are divided up into 13 individually shelled segments. The supergiants were first seen in 1897 off Canary Island by a man named Chevro. We wonder what he thought when he saw the two male amphipods. We may never find that out. He did name them, and after that, they weren't seen for over 100 years, until the 1970s when several potentials were photographed on the deep sea floor. By 1986, there were 16 specimens, the largest was 13.4 inches, which was how the supergiant name was born. Apart from the fact that they are 20 times the size of other amphipods, supergiants are extremely rare. Telescope Octopus The beauty of the telescope octopus is almost supernatural. Unlike most octopuses that dart on the seafloor, the telescope octopus drifts with deep sea ocean currents. It spends most of its life suspended in the water column. That's just as well because this personification of beauty shouldn't be crawling on the seafloor. Because it's suspended in a vertical position, the telescope octopus is harder to detect by predators. As you sure can see, the telescope octopus looks like a creature out of a fairy tale. It's transparent. Only its eyes and digestive glands can be seen. Everything else? Nope. Its body is short and long, while its arms are twice the length of its body. Its eyes are long and tubular, located on two movable stalks. It looks like a telescope. That's where the name comes from. Is that what you were thinking? Look deeper. Does it really look like a telescope? Or is it just the eyes? Yup, it's the eyes. The telescope-like giant eyes give the octopus peripheral vision, so it can easily spot approaching enemies and predators. Predators must have gotten tired of attacking the telescope octopus. First, because of its transparent flesh, the octopus does not cast shadows, and consequently, predators find it difficult to detect. 
Again, because it can go unnoticed, the telescope octopus can easily approach unsuspecting prey. So the octopus is constantly monitoring its environment at any given time. Literally, its eyes are always watching. That sounds a little bit like paranoia, if you ask us. Like, relax, you beautiful octopus. Frilled shark. There are six pairs of gill slits at the shark's throat. They appear to be fringed. This is where the name frilled shark comes from. When you're picky on your diet, you have to put in extra work in preparing your meal. You can't just eat anything. Sometimes you have to go long distances to get particular recipes. That's the story of the frilled shark. To maintain its diet of smaller sharks, cephalopods and bony fish, it has to migrate to the surface of the ocean at night to feed. The frilled shark moves like an eel when it goes hunting. It bends and lunges to capture and swallow prey whole. No slicing, dicing or spicing, it's able to swallow the entire thing thanks to its long and flexible jaws, which are filled with 300 recurved needle-like teeth. Frilled sharks reproduce through internal fertilization and give live birth, but unlike most mammals, they don't connect to their young through a placenta. Instead, embryos live off of energy obtained from yolk sacs. When the juveniles can survive on their own, the mother says, you're big enough, I can now let you go, and then gives birth to her young. No hassle. The head of a frilled shark is lizard-like. It's broad and flat with a short, rounded snout. The eyes of a frilled shark are moderately large. Although each of its teeth is small, there are 300. This provides almost a thousand sharp hooks on which to trap struggling prey. There are six gill slits behind its head on both sides of its body. Each of the slits possess a distinctive frilly margin. The dorsal fin is relatively small and set very far back on the body. Its pectoral fins are also small and paddle-shaped. Then it has a large anal fin. All of these are on the dark brown or gray-colored body of the frilled shark. Tripod fish. You know what a tripod is? It's a three-legged frame. Well, the tripod fish is three-legged. Yeah, legs. The fish can stand. Is there anything that doesn't exist under the sea? Tripod fish perch on their three elongated fin rays on the ocean floor and wait until prey comes near. To support the fish 4,700 feet below the ocean surface, the fins are both flexible and stiff. As if being the only fish, probably, that can stand, the animal also carries both female and male reproductive organs, so finding a partner to mate with is optional. Yeah, the tripod fish is one of those creatures that don't need partners. Suppose it finds a partner, oh well lucky for it. They can mate to keep a varied genetic pool. Other fish must be jealous of this species. They'll wonder why they don't also have legs, or if they do have legs but are yet to discover them. They probably ask the tripod fish, what's your secret, every time they get a chance to start a conversation. Although it prefers to stand, it can swim. Remember when we said fins are flexible? Whenever it decides to swim, the fins of the tripod fish deflate and become flexible. You may wonder why a fish would prefer to sit still when its mate is swimming around looking for food. Well, by sitting perfectly still a meter or two above the seabed, the tripod is suitably positioned for tiny fish and prawns to come speeding along on the ocean's current right into its mouth. You see, it's a trap. The fish may not see its prey coming, but with leg-like fins, they feel the vibrations from approaching creatures. The calm ones can also be the most dangerous. Pink see-through Fantasia From its name, you already know that the creature is somewhat translucent. The pink see-through Fantasia is also called the headless chicken monster. Where the headless chicken monster lives is two and a half times deeper than the depths the most powerful submarine can go. It was found 3,300 feet below the surface, off the coast of Antarctica, southwest of Australia. It's also been found in the Gulf of Mexico. The headless chicken monster is a kind of deep sea cucumber. No, we're not talking about the vegetable. Sea cucumbers are echinoderms. The dictionary defines an echinoderm as an animal of the phylum Echinodermida, comprising radially symmetric, spiny skinned marine animals such as sea urchins and starfish. The pink see through Fantasia falls under this category because of its ability to swim with its wing like fins, feed on tiny particles like algae and dwell on the ocean floor. It has a semi-transparent, jelly-like, barrel-shaped reddish body so that you can see its internal organs. It's a bioluminescent and can create and emit light, but that's not as cool as its ability to glow in the dark. 
Its scientific name translates to mean dreamer. It's no surprise because watching this creature move in the dark feels like a beautiful, peaceful dream you don't want to wake up from. The headless chicken monster has no bones, and its body is lighter than water, so there is a natural buoyancy in the animal. It floats effortlessly, just inches above the seafloor, living its best life. Cusk Eel The cusk eel is from the family name derived from the Greek word ophis, which means snake. So if you think the cusk eel looks like a snake, you're not alone. They live very close to the sea bottom. In fact, one species was recorded at the bottom of the Puerto Rico Trench, making it the deepest recorded fish at 27,460 feet. Cusk eels are generally very solitary in nature. When not hunting for food, they're likely hidden in muddy bottoms, sinkholes, or larger structures like caves, coral crevices, or bottom-dwelling invertebrate communities. There are also parasitic species of the cusk eel that live inside invertebrate hosts, including oysters, sea cucumbers, and clams. They feed only at night, preying on invertebrates, as we've mentioned crustaceans and other fish. The cusk eel is 12 times as long as it is deep. They have giant mouths relative to their heads, with the upper jaw reaching beyond the eye and paired nostrils on either side of the head. They rarely ever have scales. When they do, the scales are small. Just to be clear, you see the snake resemblance too, right? Benthocodon The benthocodon looks like a little pink spaceship, but it's not. It's a genus of hydrozoan. It can be found near the seafloor in the Pacific Ocean from Antarctica to California to the Arctic Ocean. Yet, not much is known about it. These jellyfish spend their entire lives in the water column as plankton. The genus contains two known species. However, due to their small size and red pigmentation, they can easily be confused with related genera. It looks like a spider with many legs, but it's far from it. The creature seems surreal. It's the kind that'll make you wish you were a marine biologist, and you could just spend hours studying it. When it spreads its legs, it looks like fireworks. Some say it looks like an iris with a pupil. Whichever way, it's beautiful. When it's disturbed, it retreats. Sadly, there really are beautiful creatures deep down the sea. It's wonderful to learn about some of them from time to time. Goblin Shark A goblin is a small, monstrous creature that stars in European folklore as a representation of evil. We don't think the fish named after it is any different. The goblin shark is sometimes called a living fossil and is creepy. It has an elongated, flat snout and highly protrusable jaws containing nail-like teeth. Its coloration is quite unusual. It ranges from pinkish to purplish gray, with bright blue around the edges of its fins. But the strangest thing about it is its jaw. The jaw can be extended to the length of its snout to help the goblin shark capture fish, squids, and crustaceans. Seems like everyone eats crustaceans. The goblin shark is sluggish in nature, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. It hunts mainly in the morning and evening and probably sleeps at night. It hunts for food near the seafloor and in the middle of the water column. Let's talk about the teeth. It has between 35 and 53 upper and 31 to 62 lower teeth rows. The teeth in the central part of the jaws, particularly those near the jaw midpoint, are long and narrow. Its body is relatively slender and flabby. The two dorsal fins are round and small in shape and size. The pectoral fins are similar, small and rounded. The pelvic and anal fins, on the other hand, have long bases and are larger than the dorsal fins. Because the goblin shark is not a fast swimmer, it may be an ambush predator. Its low-density flesh and large oily liver make it able to float, allowing it to wander towards its prey with very little motion so as to avoid detection. Its protruding jaw also makes it easy to snap forward and capture any target. You can say the goblin shark is a smooth criminal. Viperfish The head of a viperfish is funny. Its fangs are too big for its mouth. It kind of looks like a dead fish. It's pretty small, but it's one of the fiercest deep-sea fish, for its size at least. Its skin is usually dark silvery blue, but its coloration varies from green to silver to black. Now those fangs, they're razor sharp, and although they're too big to fit in the mouth, they interlock in front of the jaws to form an inescapable cage. R.I.P. to any fish that mistakenly gets into that cage. The fangs are the viper's way of killing fish. Should we say it munches on its prey or simply tears them to pieces? It will swim at high speeds at its prey and pierce them in the process. The viper fish is also known to hang in the water motionless. 
waving its blinking lure over its head to attract prey. Their skull is hinged and can be rotated up to swallow huge prey. Their stomachs are also large, allowing them to store enough food when it's plentiful. What a creature! The viperfish is made up of many light organs, one of which is specifically found on a long dorsal fin that acts as a lure when it's searching for prey. The water temperature and salt concentration determines the number of eggs and larvae the female produce. The females release eggs into the water and the men fertilize the eggs. Simple division of labor. Simple. Fangtooth fish. Looks a lot like the viper fish. Fangtooths are named after the disproportionately large, fang-like teeth and stiff face. However, they're small and harmless to humans. The adult fish reaches only 6 inches in length, but in proportion to body size, the fangtooth's teeth are the largest in the ocean. There are special pouches on the roof of its mouth that prevent the teeth from piercing the fish's brain when its mouth is closed. Good for it. It'd be disastrous to have their own weapon destroy them. When a fish or prey swim nearby, it simply opens its mouth and sucks it in. The fangtooth is commonly found between 1,600 and 6,500 feet deep in the water. Once it was found as deep as 16,400 feet, it stays in the deeper areas of the ocean during the day, and at night, the fangtooth fish migrates up to the shallow water to feed. A lot of deep-sea creatures tend to do that. It's known as dio-vertical migration. While younger fangtooth fish feed on zooplankton, the adults eat fish and squid. In turn, fangtooths are preyed upon by large pelagic fish like tuna, marlin, and some species of sharks. Another difference between the young and the old fangtooths is that the young fangtooths have a single row of teeth, while the adults have ferocious-looking fangs. If you could get a chance to meet any of these sea creatures, which would you pick? Let us know! We'll keep up with the scientists to see what else they find down there, and we'll get back to you. Mm -hmm.